can't record back there, though, okay? Yeah, I'm not back there. That's not the public area. You can't film from there. Yeah, I'm not back there. I'm in, in the publicly accessible area. Okay. All right, Erie County fam. This is a follow-up video to continue along the saga of the Lockport videos that were out earlier. This is a little recap of the whole saga, and then we'll get into the new stuff. Work on the story on the Labor Department and the publicly accessible areas. Okay. Um, so it sounds like they just don't want you. Well, if they don't want you here, so that's not really how they can how kind of trespass. That's not that's not how trespass law works in public. I'm happy to give you the report. Okay. Let's see if I can get that call number You're myself. Open that door, okay. You didn't even okay. you know. Thank you. That was a simple request to give that call. Okay. I was more than happy to help you. Okay, but I think you're being difficult for a purpose, and you're not going to get. Ask, asking for a call number is not difficult. The next day, we went ahead and filled out that FOIA request and turned it in for the body camera footage. I got a FOIL request to turn in here. Shortly after that FOIL request, they denied the body camera footage because it was derived for law enforcement purposes only. And of course, with the process, we went ahead and appealed that FOIL request denial for the body camera footage that was improperly denied. I'm here to appeal the denied FOIL request. Are you familiar with the appeal process? Um, yeah. Okay, so do you have the written document? Yeah, I wrote an appeal up here. It's not a denial that the public records I requested were compiled for law enforcement. Don't you think that's a little irrelevant, who they were compiled for? The public records are public records, right? I can't speak any further. It's gone through legal at this point. I'll send it back and we'll get yeah. more information. Right. Thank well. you. And of course, the city denied the full request, making us have to come back and serve them with a lawsuit to sue them for the body camera footage. That's when 10 days later after that lawsuit I served against them, they filed harassment charges four accounts for each one of the clerks that was in the clerk's office against me in retaliation for filing a lawsuit against them. Then in the fourth video we went over the chief of lies who tried to muddy the water and throw his feelings around as to why the full request should be denied and defend his harassment charges. Lawsuit that I filed against the city that we just heard the chief talk about why it should be denied um, well, he lost in court because he had no real ruling or standing in court for denying it anyway, so. Then, of course, we filed another lawsuit against the clerks for filing faulty harassment charges against me for exercising constitutionally protected activity. Hi. How are we doing? Doing all right. So, I, I'm here to serve process on four city employees. Um, okay. looking for Sarah Lanzo. I'm Sarah. Jennifer Wochna, she's not here. Carol Edwards, she's not here. and Emily Stoddard. Okay. So you said you're Miss Lanzo. I am. All right. So that's for you. And are you guys able to accept yes. service of process for these other city employees? I can take them on. Okay. All right. So we got turned over, but it was accidentally destroyed. The city ended up paying Warmus's attorney fees. All right, Erie County fam, so as far as the counts, four counts of harassment leveled against me by the four city clerks for video recording peacefully in the clerk's office have been dismissed um, in the name of justice. So that was the super short version of the whole Lockport saga. There are four full videos. If you haven't seen them, they are linked in the description down below. But now let's move on to some new content and some new stuff that is going on in the Lockport City. Where I went to some city council meetings and spoke at the city council meeting about the mishap and mayhem that went down there. And even had a sit down meeting with the new mayor where we talked about First Amendment auditing and all the mayhem that went down in the city of Lockport. Then, fam, that same very mayor put out a directive to all departments saying absolutely no one working for the city hall is to talk to the media in any form, now allowing them to use their First Amendment right to speak to the media 
whether it be newspaper, television, or radio. I am a First Amendment guy. Then, of course, fam, we're going to get to sit another sit-down meeting with the mayor to have him explain to us why he thought it was okay to put a directive out against First Amendment rights. So stay tuned. Let's get into the new footage to not only show everything that went down since and to show you guys all the much improvement that the city of Lockport has now towards First Amendment rights and the changes that the city has made. Let's go ahead and get into it. Listen, y'all, these kids want to act up in school, want to go to school and embarrass you, want to make like they got no home training. So I told my son, don't go to school and no more. I take care of you, son. I give you anything you want. I discipline you. But you're going to bash me like this? No, so now I'm going to cut his hair. Oh, I got to ask you. Hey. Ball hey. So you were in a restricted area. Now I want your identity. You're not getting it. Don't embarrass me. I told you, don't embarrass me. No. Down here today it is January 10th, 2024, here in the city of Lockport. Down here for a city council meeting. And uh, we got a new mayor in. And uh, let's go ahead and get inside and get ready for this council meeting. Looks like it's going to be starting here any second, any time now. So I need a sponsor. So essentially, uh, looking over the Corp Council budget, that they had, um, well, I want to say about a, a fourth position for another attorney. And in years past, they were uh, yeah. farming out uh, I I assessment cases. The first half of the meeting was a work session that was open to the public and you could see there's some definite gridlock between the new mayor and the old establishment that was going in and once the work session was over we go ahead and get to the main meeting where we got to speak to the city council all right everyone stand uh good evening everyone and welcome to the common council meeting for january 10th 2020 uh Let's recite the uh, Pledge of the Flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. And uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Craig? Here. Alderman Devine? Here. Alderman Fogo? Here. Alderman Kirchberger? Here. Alderman Lupo. Here. Alderman Mullane. Here. All right. We will now have uh, the invocation, and I would like to uh, call to the podium Pastor Steve O'Mara from Fig Tree Fellowship, good friend of the council's and a good friend of mine. Pastor. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to participate um, in our government. Father, you are the reason for authority. Father, you are our ultimate authority. Father, we ask that you would uh, you would speak today, Father, for um, the aldermen, for the mayor, uh, and for each of us, Father, that you would you would speak to what you will for this city. And Father, we ask that you would you would grant us peace in, in tumultuous situations, and Father, that you would grant us um, good conversation and, and Father, that you would lead this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. We have a resolution sponsored by Alderwoman Fogel, seconded by Alderman Devine. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Wasn't this fun the first time out? Yep. Yeah. All right, we will now have <clears throat> an opportunity for public input for the benefit of the community. Come to the podium, please state your name and your address, and speak only for the betterment of the community. All right, my name is Dan Erie County. My residency is Erie County. I'm a journalist. I do First Amendment auditing, and I had some experience here in the city and talk, come up here to talk about things that would be a betterment for the city. I think it's time to remove um, Stephen Abbott as chief police, and I think it's time to remove Sarah Lanzo as city clerk. Um, they use the legal system to um, bring false charges. They lied on sworn affidavits. I think their credibility is shot. And I think that a full investigation of that whole situation should be looked into and uh, possibly the removal of the other three clerks in the office as well. 
Um, I think that it is absolutely imperative that the Constitution is upheld above all else in this uh, country because it's one of the most sacred documents that we have. And for the disgrace that the, the clerk's office, the police department used to try to violate my probation. And uh, one of your uh, attorneys, I'm not sure if it's one of the attorneys that is no longer there on a, Article 78, even mentioned in the New York State Supreme Court on Article 78 that he was trying to work with my probation department to violate my probation when I've done no crime, I've done no wrong. Um, and if we're not going to remove some of these people, we're definitely going to need some training for these people to understand the rights of the citizens because if we don't have the Constitution, um, this country isn't, isn't, hasn't got much left to protect the people's rights. It's, the Constitution is a contract between the government and the citizens of rights that we are born with, not that we have to ask for, not that we have to um, go to court and defend ourselves and spend a lot of money in court to find ourselves innocent on such a thing. I think it's repulsive what the city did, and I think there needs to be an investigation on it with this new administration and uh, take into consideration of some of these people that maybe shouldn't be in the, in these spots. Um, and if we are going to keep them in the spots, I think they need to learn how to treat the public a little better um, and take things a little more serious because at the end of the day, you guys are all elected officials and everybody in this, sitting in this audience right now is your boss. All right? And if you can't respect that, you've got no place in the government or running any part of the government because um, too many people sitting back for too long causes a uh, problem in the United States and this is where we're at with government in a lot of places all over the, all over this country that uh, this, the government's backwards like like we work for them and we have to listen to them and, and you know it's it's a matter of you know I don't like the way you spoke to me but at the end of the day these people forget that we're their boss and when there's a, a president said you know when the, the government fears the people there's tranquility and when the people fear the government there's tyranny and not, not that I want to create tyranny for this uh, government in, all, in any fashion, because I'd like to work with them and enjoy it, because I've been to places in city halls and town halls, and I've been to places where I walked out of there feeling like I own the joint. And uh, we had a great experience, and not only is it a great experience for me, it's a great experience for the people. And the outreach that the government receives from such an audit is... Uh, something, you know, they're, they're not complaining about the people that called them and redressed their grievances because they didn't, they didn't do it in a fashion where they were mad at the government for the way they treated the people. They were, you know, thanking them for, for being outstanding public servants. And I've run into good public servants and bad service, public servants all over this uh, western New York, all the way across the, the country. So um, I'd like to think that you guys would do a little examination of the people that you got working for us. And if we can't get some great training for them, maybe it's time for some of these people to step down or be removed because what I went through is not something that anybody should go through, especially not somebody exercising constitutional rights that they have a right to do, or to feel like I'd be inalienated to walk into this building and uh, take pictures of anything, to feel like I gotta worry about, I'm gonna wake up some morning and have a summons to court in the mailbox for not committing any crime. Um, and I think it's wrong, and I, think, I, I hope that you guys take some advice here and look into um, right, wrong, and uh, get some either better training or get rid of some of these people if they can, uh, accommodate the Constitution because the Constitution is number one. First Amendment is the law number one in this country and it's that way for a reason. Um, thank you. I understand and I agree and that's why we have an appointment next week. We'll sit down and I, we'll discuss I do appreciate that. I'm looking forward to it, Mayor. Thank you. Today in the city of Lockport, it is January 18th, down here for an interview with the mayor. Um, reached out to us and want to have a sit down meeting and straighten some things out for the good of the city and the make the city look better from the fiascos that happened with Lockhart here and uh, let's go ahead and get inside here and get to this interview hey Dan how you doing hey Dan you want me to take that yeah, yeah you can walk in you need this run through we we're okay with this? Yeah. All right. You're okay with it? We're okay. Nope, I'm you fine. You just can't use it in the corner. Oh, no, no. We're going down to my office. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Number one I want to point out here is the difference between the old mayor administration and the new mayor's administration and when it comes to the court staff of this place. And 
you can see the difference between the way the court staff reacts and the way they react after the new mayor comes in. You just heard the court staff say, if you're good with it, I'm good with it, versus what it used to be like, like this. Mr. Weber. Oh, sure. We're just trying to, we need to go to the city clerk's office. No, but you got to turn the camera off and see the blinking light. Well, uh... You cannot film in this area. There's signs everywhere. You've been in here before. Uh, that's, that's true. Yes, I have been. Yes. Um, so you're aware of the court's policy? Well, we're not going into the court. We're just going to the city clerk's office. I understand, office. but you're filming security right now. You cannot film in the court area. I'm not stopping you from filming down there. I'm stopping you from filming right here, right now. Okay. Okay. But we're not, we're not in the court. We're, we're... This is the court. We're part of the court. I am part of the court. This is New York State Court Officer. So you're, 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 this is a viewing post. Can't, can't film here. Why don't you move the post then closer to the court? Because government's not efficient. I get it. That's the way it is. That's can, the way it is. Can we? Can we? Can we the we, security post provides security for the entirety of the building. After we get you through the security post, you're more than welcome to film in the areas that are open to the city public. So you're not going to stop us from filming going through here to go ahead and conduct our business with the city clerk. Once no. you get through security screening, absolutely yeah, not. Okay. So as you can see, with the new administration and mayor in, you can see that the court staff has changed their tune about walking into this section with a camera. He said, if it's all right with you, it's all right with us. We're okay with this? Yeah. All right. You're okay with it? We're okay. Nope, I'm fine. Oh, no, no. We're going down to my office. I don't know where you want to sit. I appreciate you coming in. Yeah. I appreciate you having us. You sure. know what, Dan? I'm I'm one of you guys, in a sense. Dave Mangello and I have been friends forever. I think he's probably one of the smartest guys when it comes to, you know, constitutional law. He's helped me and friends of mine. I like the guy. And I what, the reason I wanted you in here. I don't understand everything that you do and how you do it, but I understand why you do it. I mean, how long have you been doing it? Um, so I've been first time auditing and be going on three years. And oh, really? March, or no, May. May. Okay. Maybe we've probably three years of the channel. And uh, the whole goal of it is to provide more transparency in government, a little oversight, and I always said there's nothing more American in this country than checks and balances. Exactly. So. I know that a lot of people are fed up with the system as far as law enforcement and never having no checks and balances. And with my channel, there's awful opportunities to point it out and to um, show that the system is somewhat rigged against right. the people. I mean, like just simple stuff from uh, FOIA requests. Like, FOIA requests, supposed to be open government, allow you to access public records and Boy, the games you got to play and the stuff you, you have know, to go through to get public records. Not to stop you, but I don't understand how the FOIL process works. I've never had to do it. Why wouldn't people just, I mean, if you have a FOIL request and you're requesting certain information, why can't you just get it? <laughs> that is the million dollar question. I'll well, tell I, mean, you, I would love to know the answer to that question, but the, the honest answer to that is the system in a lot of police departments, and I'm not specifically talking about Lockport. Yeah, I'm sure what, what, I'm, what I'm talking right now, um, I definitely had a real hard time getting public records to the point where the city of Lockport Police Department broke the law, deleted the evidence, <coughs> deleted stuff, and, 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 and yeah, I can't suit in court. On yeah, it, I'm not even, about about even going there because you know I got some litigation going with that, and this, that what this meeting's about at all. And we're not oh, going to no. touch on that. No, I just but um, like. To touch on like why the government wouldn't give it like sometimes the government does things that ain't right and they're going to cover their tracks they're going to lie they're gonna give that you know it's what? just gaslighting in i general, just don't too. comprehend i mean i've been an alderman for 12 years over the past 20 and i'm three weeks into this mayor's position and i don't understand why you wouldn't i, I work for the public i work for the people i was elected by the people to do the best job i can I don't understand where, even from this position here, not having that much time in, why would I hide anything? Why would I? Why would people do that? I mean, I get, I get a, a it's a part-time job. I get paid to do 
what I enjoy doing. I don't understand why you or people such as yourselves have the problems that you have. I just don't get it. I've watched all your I stuff. Mean, some of it is just the fact that the government does things that ain't legal. They don't, they what do things that ain't legal. Because they don't the, know or they, they do know? Tracks. Um, I'm sure they know. Um, and the other, one is, the other one is a lot of it is ego. Like, ego is the hugest you, you problem. Can, you like, can't have mine because it's mine. Right? Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna use the chief of police here in Clockport, for example. He denied a full request, and he, his assumption of the law. Okay. Um, now, I full requested body camera footage from an incident that I had on Was it February the 14th of the, of the Department of Labor. I, I full requested the body camera footage, and uh, one officer went in the back room. He spoke to. The lady in the back room had his body camera running, and then they wouldn't give me this footage. Which because which of, because all, of that conversation? The reason they didn't give me the footage is unknown, because they never gave us the footage. They deleted the footage. I thought There's, you had to hold it. See, I don't know these things. And you do, I thought you, you had to hold, to hold for a period of time. And that's why the city of Lockport Police Department got in trouble in New York State Supreme Court in Erie County, where we took them to a lawsuit, and the judge they and pretty much we, said, we, no, we shouldn't have it. The judge said to him, well, you better get it to us. Okay. And then the, the attorney that was in the court there was like, well, it's gone anyways. We accidentally deleted it. And it's like, and you ask, why wouldn't they just give it up? Um, it, it just makes me wonder. Like, but it didn't it's red flags. Nothing was said that it incriminated them. We don't know. But it, it brings up red flags. That we, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you say, like, that looks I watched, like red flags? I watched that one. Which one? At the one at the Department of Labor. Have you seen the body camera footage? No, no, yeah, but see, I, I saw what you posted. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is whatever that officer, um, Struckwell, I think his name yeah, is, said in the back room. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, did he did, oh, he, did use, he defame you? Yeah, or did I mean, he, did, he, did he call me a racial slur? Or so, you know what I mean? Like, we don't know. And I'm not saying he did or didn't. Because we, we don't, don't know. know. But as soon as they deny it and won't give it, and they went to all the extent of, you know, denying it through the appeals process and then I'll explain it to you real quick the appeals process and that but it brings up red flags like what were they hiding I mean what did the guy say in the back room that they would go through this whole length like you're saying why not just give it up I mean why not so obviously to me and I can't prove anything because it's gone but it's, it runs, runs red flags like what what was it about what, what, what did they say back there um, it might have been something simple and is that like you know? and I always use the term like oh well why didn't you give it up it always oh, that secret government and you know that as an American, and you know, as government, uh -huh. it's supposed to be open and transparent, and mm -hmm. the, the government's supposed to work for the people. But a lot of times, it just so doesn't. So, the chief of police denied the FOIA request on a law. And was, there's certain reasons why you don't have to give out body camera footage. And the well, reason that's got to be very. I mean, what kind of criteria are they saying? Well, and I'll tell you exactly. So, the, the law says that you uh, that the police department can deny body camera footage if it's going to inhibit or impede an inve ongoing an investigation. investigation. So like, for I'll give you an example. Say I rob the bank, right? I full request the body camera footage and it shows that the bank robber was wearing blue gloves, I right? Got, I gotcha. And now I request that footage and they show that evidence. I said, oh shoot, I was wearing blue gloves. I better go home and destroy the blue gloves and get rid of them, right? Wow. Now that would inhibit a police investigation wow. because I could get rid of evidence by using the body camera against, and, and that's a legitimate reason why, gotcha. well, what that law would mean. Well, the chief of police here in Lockport literally used that to say it would inhibit with future investigations that don't exist in the future. In his in, in his write up, if you look at his write up, and it's on video, his assumption is that if he starts giving out body camera footage, people in the future are, gonna, oh. are not going to talk to him because. Oh. Yeah, but that doesn't have any bearing on what you were doing for that day. Correct, and that's why that's why it's so aggravating because. So this could have all been just kind of. He should have given out the body camera footage, and that's what the the, the, the town of or the city of Lockport actually came to a conclusion with the, you know, courts are like the courts like he was entitled to it. There's no reason you shouldn't. Have. And my problem is I knew it all along. You know what I mean? Like I walked in, I filled out a floor request, I get a denial for the reason, and you know, like and when I appealed it. I, you know, I said to the city clerk here, I wow. said, you know, don't you think that's a little relevant that uh, it could, you know, like, well, she, in, she, or she derive law enforcement purposes? And uh, she just, 
wouldn't say anything. I don't. I don't know. In the at the end of the day, I don't know if the city clerk is the. At the end of the, day, I'm sure she's not the one who said no. We're not giving it out. I don't believe she would be. But it was definitely the chief of police's decision at the end of the day, and he decided not to give it out for whatever reasons. And I mentioned to her, and they just shrugged me off. They laugh at me on the phone. And, for you? Yeah, and and you can you can see her, uh, the clerk, laugh at me when I'm saying like, you know, I appealed it. The, the, the appeal is past due. Um, what's well, going that, on? That's she's one like, of the reasons I she's want like, to I mailed, I mailed it out last week. I'm like, well, I should have it by now, but you know, tell me, did you deny the appeal again so I can get the lawsuit going? And she laughed about it. Like, huh. I'm like, like, uh, like, well, she's there. And that's the thing about government is, so the foil system works like this. You fill out a foil request for something such as body camera footage, right? You fill it out on a piece of paper, you hand it in. They have five days to acknowledge it by letter. So they you, you fill out a, a public records request you or anything the government deny it or give it yeah, to you. So they got three options on, on well, they got five days to respond, right? Then they got twenty days past that to produce or there's three options. There's either deny, approve and give the stuff out, or ask for more time, given like I came down here and asked for all the employees schedules, all the credit card statements and and for two years, you know, I mean, like that could take someone a lot longer than a month to do all that while doing their other duties but, as a job. So they can ask for more time. But you have the right, as well as I do, or anybody out there, to come in and ask for any of this stuff. See, I, I just don't understand why people don't just do it, jask. You know, you wouldn't have to go through <laughs> any of that. I'll tell you what, if they would just do what I asked, and you know, do it at full request asked. Yeah. If they would just do their job with integrity, like now this goes for any government position. If they just did their job with integrity, you know what? First Amendment auditing would exist. You know what I mean? Like there would be no need to come check up on the government and show. Like part of what I do, and a good example is what I do, and why I fill out a full request, why I go get the body camera footage, is to educate the public of what how the system works. Number one, so like. The video's here when um, they claimed harassment and the thing because I came here and I video recorded each step of it. Well, can I stop you? Harassment? What did you, what, what is harassment classified as? I mean, did, were you verbally so abusive? Pen penal code is, um, of harassment is to do something repeatedly with no legitimate purpose with the intent to annoy, uh, annoy and alarm. But you didn't? Right, and that's why ultimately at the end of the day it got dismissed so out the here. So the charges were charges. just... Like, my attorney said to, the, in, when we were in court, he said to the judge, he said, I, these, you know, we're, we're asking for motions to dismiss it because anybody with any type of law degree or any type of common sense would have never brought these charges in the first place. And... I'm surprised they didn't... The judge looked at it and said, you know what, and his words were, in front of the whole place, was what Mr. Warmus did was strange, Maybe annoying to some, but it's not criminal. It's not harassment. So he dismissed all four charges because ultimately, to me, and I can't prove it, and I don't want to get too too I into it, it yeah. just because there is a lawsuit. Because it to is me, it's it still like ongoing. The, from your end or from so the the lawsuit for the public records was settled. Okay. All right. And when you sue somebody, all right. So let's just jump right back to. Yeah, right, so I, I get, apologize. The, I the steps for the um, full request. You get you know. After the say they deny it or they approve it or they ask for more time, right? Now, if they approve it, you get yourself good. You're good to go. That, that's it. Should work within 25 days. You should have whatever you ask for, given that it's not a lot of information, all right? So, if they deny it, you can, can appeal a denial. And sure. It's just another step where they deny it. I wrote an appeal why they think that this is not right and, and all that and tell them all that this is public records there's no reason this this law you stated isn't qualified to deny it okay. and you appeal it right now if a town say i fill in a full request and they just flat out ignore it 30 days go by and nothing happens right they just ignore it do people do that oh yeah and why do they do it because they don't know or well there's two reasons they do it number well, one hiding something they're hiding something number one Number two, ego, or number three, they just so, want to so be a pain. So basically, ego, in the, like in the you're not there. getting what I got. Yeah, and that might be just the. It you could know be exactly what, what the chief Dan? did down here. Like, oh, this guy went down there. We we asked him to leave, and he wouldn't leave because he was exercising his rights, and he got a little ego, maybe a little butthurt, and he didn't want to give you know it. What? Or the other option is, 
struck well, said something in the back room that if they put out, it's, it's going to make them look really bad. Because we've seen many in videos on YouTube where we get body camera footage, and one of the things that you know, um, there's a First Amendment order, uh, Long Island audit. He's, he I went to it. Danbury, Connecticut, and one of the body camera footage after they walked away, they said something along the lines of, you know, five years ago this guy would have been on the ground, you know. And he goes, 20 years ago, this guy would be dead with his teeth missing, right? And that's a hot mic caught on their body cams. They got all the footage, and, uh, you know, like, 20 years ago, he'd be dead with his teeth that's missing. That's threatening. That means 20 years ago, the policing in America, because there's no cameras, no evidence, they would have murdered the guy, removed his well, teeth so the body can't be identified. But, like, I'm not saying struck well it says something like that back I, there, you, but... I, I know the kid. But, you know what I'm saying, like... We don't know what he said back there, and it just makes it look dirty, and we'll but never know because they deleted it. And you, you and me, if you came, you know, I was at that window. I know you know your rights. I may not know exactly what you know, but I would respect and acknowledge that this guy must know what he's talking about. I mean, if the, the way I to articulate this. myself down here and I talk about yeah. things, and you're I, not, I, I can't write my own report. You're not so I do it for a living. I yeah. do it for a living. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is my job. Auditing Erie County is a company registered with the state. It has its own DBA. It is an official company. It's a I, media, I, media company. So I'm jealous of you, all your stuff. It's, let me, it's pretty uh, so entertaining. You write the appeal for a denial, or they ask more time, right? So you write the appeal. Now they got another five days to respond to your appeal, and they got another 20, 20 days, days to do the that. same thing. How, how many times can you? So appeal? once it's appealed and they deny an appeal, then what, you, what comes into effect is a lawsuit. It's called the Article 78, right? And the lawsuit for public records is just that. It, you sue for public records. Like I can't sue the police department for the records and you know three thousand dollars for my wasted time. I got you. Only thing I can fold, yes, I can material itself. Yeah, and then the only thing that you're entitled to on a judgment on that is either the court's going to give you the stuff or not. Given you know you're challenging their opinion of why the law says they don't have to. Because by law, like FOIL, is freedom of information law. It's a law, right? If you're not handing this stuff out and you're not giving it, these municipalities are violating law. Like the police department here violated the law. But like, who's gonna hold them accountable? They're the law enforcement. Well, are they gonna arrest themselves? Now you've been doing this a long time. When you get information, how do you know that's true? See, that's another gray area, like. How do you know it hasn't been? Like for instance here, this is a good example. Down in Lockport, the chief of police supposedly downloaded the video, put it on a disc to send it to my probation department, right? Now they say it's gone and deleted. How do we know he doesn't have a copy on his desk still somewhere, or somebody has it somewhere saved, and they're just you, lying. You, you like, don't know. The court can't physically go into their department and check. So right there, so FOIL, is, it, FOIL is almost a it, joke. It doesn't have a lot of power. And, and you know, there's, there's um, organizations out there like... Um, for open government organizations that are trying to pass legislation to give it more teeth. Like certain states, if it had more teeth, like Florida has some laws with their public records that um, if they don't give out this information, you can sue for monetary damages. Oh, wow. And it could cost the city you know, oh, $50,000 if they don't, but we don't have that here in New York yet. So we don't have that, that kind of teeth. Are people lobbying for that? There are people lobbying for it. There are groups out there. I've been to a few of these meetings, like open board meetings and, and that, and uh, the name of the actual organization at the moment is escaping me, but I'll probably put it what, in. But, um, what, what, brought, what brought you here when you first came here? Just just one of your travels? Well, I went to the, um, I, I did a First Amendment audit here like year and a half or year before I, I came so. for, um, I did the audit of the whole building, went to all the offices, just checked it out. Oh, um, they record the offices, make sure people respect my rights. Now, First Amendment audit has a couple purposes. It is, um, you know, exercising rights. It's an employee conduct check because we're going to expose how the public or the public is treated by employees. Um, so it's actually a, a good tool. It's an excellent tool, and you know what? A lot of municipalities miss it, right? Because like, if I come in and I come to your office and I take some video footage and you come up and say, hey, what's going on? Oh, I'm just down here to take some pictures, see what's available. If you take the opportunity to be like, oh, come check out my office, look at this, look at that. Um, this is the services we offer here. We're here to help the people. They can make themselves look real good. Yeah. But <laughs> then you got municipalities that call the police. Like I was just saying. But that's uh, because they don't understand it. Right. And, and well, problem, I saw what you did at the Total Alert Board. The problem is, the problem is, 
all you guys who, not just, you know, like, sure. generalize, all you guys who are elected positions, police officers, you all swore oath to the Constitution. Right. Right. Like, the First Amendment and my right to come in this place and video record, that, that's nothing new. That was with the Founding Fathers, they just didn't have cameras back then. Right. But, you know, like, the Founding Fathers were very smart. They didn't say freedom of the newspaper, because they knew in the future the, the press would be using different technology. Just like the, the Second Amendment doesn't say the right to bear a musket, because that was, they said the right to bear arms, because they knew in the future that, you know, change. Swords were the weapon in the day. That was arms, right? Yeah. Then they had a musket. They knew that an AR-15 might come about. They knew that maybe a laser-guided, you know, shoot like Star Wars type yeah. stuff. So that's why the the Constitution is like a living document, and it has the ability. Like people are like, it doesn't say nothing in the Constitution about video recording. It's like, well, actually, it does. It's the freedom of the press. You're going to tell me the press doesn't use a camera to broadcast news? You know what the biggest problem you have is nobody understands the Bill of Rights. Nobody, they're not even teaching this I stuff. I think, it, I don't know if it's by design to, to make it so that to the dumb us down. Can be, exactly. And, it, and I don't I mean, like, there's there's a lot of man questions to be answered, and that's, and it, obviously that's way over our heads. I mean, well, we're talking the federal government well, smart organized, no, I'm saying the federal government organized the schooling system and what should be taught and what standard. So did they stop teaching constitutional law and like people like, so the First Amendment audit is in effect to, you know, employee conduct check, it's to exercise rights, and it's to teach, treat people. Like, when I first started out three years ago, walked into a public building with a camera, the cops were coming. The cops were going to try to trespass me. Yeah, but you did your homework prior to Oh, yeah, I mean, like, I knew my rights. So you, you understand constitutional law better than most well, people. And a lot of people, you know, like, some of these people would be like, oh, you're hiding behind the Constititution. You're, you're hiding behind the Constitution. You're like, not hiding that's behind the most, it. That's the most un-American. That the dumbest thing. That's the could. most un-American statement anybody can make is you're hiding behind the Constitution. Like, I'm, am I? Because the Founding Fathers literally I'm said it's our duty it. to question the government. It's our duty to check there out the government. There has to be checks and balances. Right. So you're part of the checks and balances. Exactly. In, in my my objective is never to come down here and get a rise out of something. Like Mr. Crocker in that video, and you say you watch it. Like let me tell you, it would have been a whole like you see in the video. You watch me go through the town. The staff in there was beautiful. They were perfect. I couldn't ask for more. I walked around the building. I made my one lap around the exterior yeah, of the building. So I was on my way out. If he never showed up, you would have been good. The, the town of Lockport would have had a great review, right? All right. So Mr. Crocker shows up, video recording, which I don't care that he does. I don't care that he yeah, does but it. But to me, that means you feel threatened and I'm going to get you. I don't understand. Well, been like, I, fight, I fight for the rights. Like, my, my job is to... So like, if he'd have left it alone... Right. Well, here's the thing that where he, he went wrong. Like, if he came up to me, walked up to me with his camera and recorded me like that, you know, I fight for those rights for him, to, his right to do that. I don't care. You can video record me all day long. And that's what you said, though. Right. But when he walked up and started asking questions, right? If a stranger came up to you on the street and started asking you questions, where are you doing, where are you going, what are you doing, would you answer them? None of your business. Right? It's none of their business. Right? So when he started asking questions, my first question was, who are you? If he would have said, oh, I'm the supervisor of the town, that whole situation, the whole conversation... Oh, he didn't identify different. himself? I asked him twice what it was, and he wouldn't identify well, himself. Then he, he said, who are you? He kept saying, who are you, who are you? And it's like, if you watch the video, it's like, it I'm is. done with this guy. He's asking, who am I? I don't even know who he is, right? I literally just walked past him. I was done with him. Oh, but As I'm walking you, away, he's like, you well, I'm the supervisor of the town. And I turn around, like, why won't you say that in the first place? This conversation would have been different. Like, you're a total stranger asking me who I am. So, like, the First Amendment audit could go real smooth. I and mean, I tell these people all the time, like, auditing your account is a platform. You can shine on it or you can shit on it. You're yeah. going to make your apartment look bad. And it's not going anywhere, though. We've got the Bill of Rights out in the fort. It's all over the wall. It's there. I I never see anybody stopping looking at this stuff. I was taught in high school, and it might have been junior high, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the fact that we need to take charge and the checks and balances should be in place. I welcome guys like you because I feel we all should know what you know. You might be doing it for whatever reason, none of my business, but I think you're trying to educate. And if I were you, I'd be doing seminars on this. No, I definitely would. I mean, like, I wouldn't mind sitting down doing seminars. I actually thought about, you know, setting one up for law enforcement and just inviting all the departments and send some guys down and we'll, let's talk about it. You know, but the, with the ego allow them to come. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and you know what, though? Thing, like, you are 100% right. I don't know if, if I had this set up for you, 
I, I, I like you. I respect you. I know what you're doing. I just didn't, I had questions. You answered all my questions. I would put you out in the chambers and it's anybody that wants to come down and understand Constitution the way it's supposed to be, it would educate. I mean, if, if we didn't have the situation here in the city of Lockport the way it ended up, that was before I came here. Mm -hmm. I govern differently. I give everybody an opportunity. And what I've told all my department heads since I got here, I am your boss, but I do not want to be your boss unless you don't do your job and now I have to. I said there's checks and balances on both sides. If they all understood constitutional law, we'd be better off. Right. I mean, like, at the end of the day, the Constitution is the most sacred document to this country. It's the founding. Like, the Constitution isn't um, go rights that the government gave us. That's our rights that we were born with. They're right. unalienable. Right. right. That's a contract between the it's government and us. It says what they can't do. It's not what we can do. It's what they can't do. They can't limit us with the press. They can't limit our speech. They can't limit us gathering, you know, or they can't limit redress of grievance to your government. So, like... You know, like the First Amendment already has a lot of power because in the First Amendment it has five elements it's freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, right to redress your grievances, and the right to assemble. Now, the right to redress your grievances to your government means that if the people watching my videos don't like what they see, they have the right, they to, have the right to call them up and tell them how they feel about it. Now, some people definitely go overboard and they make like death threats. And, and I'm gonna go ahead and pause this real quick right here to advise everybody. Anybody who ever redresses their grievances from watching my videos or any other videos, there is a very fine line between redressing grievances to your government and making threats or harassment. Those are absolutely intolerable and inappropriate. If you ever do that, you are not representing the Auditing Erie County family and absolutely unappreciative for anybody who ever makes threats, violent threats or harassing phone calls to these people. Being professional is the only way we are going to make positive change in this community. And I just want to state that very clearly for the record. And, and I understand like how aggravating it is because I do it for a living. Like, yeah. Why didn't they give me the records? They should have given me the records. I'll call to you. Um, but maybe there's something you can look into and maybe yeah. there's something you can do with your administration and uh, be a, ch a champion for the city of Lockport sure. is to set up some type of... Um, citizens review board for all complaints against police officers or against it's a good idea and, and there are these reviews um i think new york city call calls it uh just on the top of my head but a citizens complaint review board now these are not police officers these are you just know people who run people. for the board maybe they get appointed oh. or you know they run an the election even just for, but these are citizens who live in your city who sit on a board and they just like maybe a, a group of like five, ten people, I don't know, like the size of the board, the authority they would they just go over stuff, they would, be, review. they would be entitled to look at the body camera footage, see it, and, and they would make a decision. Now you don't have, we're investigating ourselves, we find no wrongdoing, because so many times, that's we, how it works. Which is what the Board of Ethics review kind of does. So I don't know if they review um, police officers or complaints against I, I don't know that, that, I can't say that, but I know it's employees within the building and in the city. But like I always say, there's nothing more American than checks and balances. So if you can add all the checks and balance to, to the government, it's, it's, it's better for the people. So if that's something you want to look into and you, yeah. can, and you can accomplish here in your administration, that would be a huge win for the city. Can I ask you for help? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, I would say I would jump on the board, but I'm not a resident of yeah, I would have to, I would Lock, the city of Lockport. But I mean, I would help see it through or, you know. You know what I really would like you make to it do? Transparent. I don't know if it'll happen here or not, is you do a seminar on First Amendment audit. I would definitely do that. And if you want to make it so that the employees here come and right. we can just talk about it, we can make it even if I've only, thing. Even if I've only got two or three people. Or just the, people head, the, head, the heads of all the departments Department that can train their guys and, and talk about and it. And that's where you and I talked last week about educating. They need to be educated. Yeah, education is definitely the king. Um, I, I really would like to invite you back and to possibly, I'll send a communication around to say if you're interested in, well, you should be. I, I, I can't man, I can't mandate it. And I can't, well, yeah, I can. Just happen to be the mayor. <laughs> it's funny how that works. <laughs> but I mean, if you did a, a half hour. Yeah, you know, we could sit down and, and just talk about, you know, the fundamental rights of the 
the First Amendment, about, you know, and the Fourth Amendment's another huge one. What is the Fourth Amendment? So the Fourth Amendment is the right from searches and seizures. Okay. Um, so that means, like, if I'm walking down the street and a cop comes up to me and says, hey, I need your ID, I need to know who you are. They can't get it. That's illegal. I've seen that. That would be an illegal uh, search and seizure. That. Yeah. So, like, well, you're, not, you're not confrontational. No, I tried not to because at the end of the day, my goal and my objective is to unify the people, is to get transparency in government. Now, there's a lot of people out there, like, there's two aisles of this fence in doing this job. There's people who love the police, there's people who hate the police. There's people who love the government, there's people who hate the government. Understood. These people who love the police and the government, they don't see the problem of, like, no. not being able to get a FOIA request film. Right. They don't see the problem of a police officer investigating themselves and finding right. their own wrongdoing. So, now, if I go in a situation like that and I walk in there, I can make a cop hater hate the cops all day long. Now, if I can out professional a cop and be cordial and be polite, and they don't act professional and polite, now you got the people that hate the cops, the people that love the cops on my side. Now we're winning. Now I'm showing the point that. Yeah, but you're you know, making the point known. Making the point known so that now we got both sides of the aisle looking at me and they're saying, well, look, wait a minute, why didn't they get this record out? You know, you know what? So wait you, a minute. You, you bring the, the question. I bring the question, and my, I operate in the court. My court is the court of public opinion. Now there's a court down here, there's a court of law where you go through lawyers, and, but my court I work in is the court of public opinion. My objective is to show the people the way it works, whether it's good or bad, and let the people decide how it's going. And if I can point out the problem with foil and fix the problem with foil, I just serve my country. Right? If I can, if we can you know, serve the problem of more accountability in the foil system somehow through people going, wait a minute, the law says they have to give it, but they're not, and there's no repercussions for that. Once so, so why wouldn't they deny it? Why wouldn't they make me spend thousands of dollars on an attorney and go through the whole system? At the end of the day, they know they're gonna end up doing it, but they just expect people to give up. And they, they deny your FOIA request. They just don't expect people to fill out that uh, appeal. Yeah. So like when I said, you know, if, you, if you're denying my FOIA, I'm gonna, or my appeal, I'm gonna sue you. Some of these people laugh because they're like, yeah, he'll probably never do it, and they're just expecting that. But that's why it's important to go the whole nine rounds. Well, you know what, Dan, I think people are generally good. I want to see the good in all of them. I just don't think they're knowledgeable. I, I think police, municipal workers, or whoever you're approaching, don't understand what they're required to do, or what the, the amendments mean. That's why I'm saying you should go out on a tour doing what you do best. You know, I mean, if I could get you in front of 30, 40 people, if 10, 15 of those people pull something out of that, you've accomplished what you're trying right. to do. Right, and you know what? If you set something like up that, I would definitely show up because at the end of the day, a lot of people say I'm in this for clicks and views or fame or blah, blah, blah. Well, I, say, I, I, even, job, I even kidded you about this that. This job is not easy. I'm it comes with tons of stress. Couldn't do it. Like, waking up in the morning, coming to the thing, finding four charges of harassment, city of Lockport, that's stressful. Yeah. That's that's hard. I gotta go. I gotta you know like this country says proven guilt or innocent to proven guilty. guilty. Mm. That's just not the way you see how it's, that's not the way it's working. You know what I mean I like think you're 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 guilty until you hire a lawyer, pay him five thousand dollars to prove your innocence. That's not the way that it was supposed to be. I, I actually so admire, like, I admire what you do. I I see the, the reason we need it, and that's why I think I'm going to try to figure out a way to put people in here. So to say that if you said something, I would definitely come and I would definitely try to educate the people because um, I'm assuming that you watched the whole thing that went down, you become mayor, and the reason that you asked me to come down here is because yeah. you didn't like the image that the city got out of it, and you didn't think that's acceptable, I, I, so you wanted something I wanted better for the city. I wanted city. to know, yes, exactly. And that's why we're having this meeting today. Right. I, assume that's I don't know how here. many other guys actually and call I you and say, hey, that. look, come on in, I want to talk to you. <laughs> I could count the amount of supervisors, mayors, chief of police. just try to shy away. On one hand, out of three years of filming, multiple videos a month, you know what? a week, my, my, my whole platform I can count them on one hand of people who are, are accountable, who appreciate it, and you know, take the opportunity. Like, I, could do that I don't understand why people look at you as the bad guy. I don't. I don't get it. Um, I don't. I mean, I, I really just don't. Never watched. They're not knowledgeable. They, they, they probably never run. watch because nobody who watches my videos go, oh yeah, he's just out there for to antagonize these people. Because it's just not the way. There it are works. some that do it. There's, yeah, there's there are. You know, and there's bad, there's bad uh, profession, bad people in every profession out there. Whether you got a good mechanic, a bad mechanic, you got a good cop and a bad cop, right. you got a good first amendment, or you got a bad one. You got good mayors and you got sure. bad ones. Yeah. So I mean, 
Well, you know what? I ran on the pretense of trying to straighten out a mess that I thought we had. We do have a problem, and we're going to work it out. My, I am full transparent, although by opinion you could say that some people like me, some people don't, but like you said, there's good, they're bad. I'm going to prove that the city of Lockport needs someone like me in the council we have. Bringing you in here, it didn't, it didn't even, I didn't even second guess why I was bringing you in. I mean, when I got you on the phone, I'm going, damn, the guy's calling me. You know, I'm going to take the call, I'm going to find out, because I always wanted to meet not necessarily just you, but knowing Dave and knowing what you guys do, that's what I wanted. I wanted to know more. Yeah, so now I, I do. I called to ask about public speaking because some media, some cities you got to sign up because there's so many people in there. So I called we, and asked about public speaking. I didn't even state who I was. They must have recognized my voice. It must have got back to you. They you called me back because it went to the clerk. Yeah, it went. To, I, I called the city clerk. So and one of them must have recognized my voice and they must have related to somebody to say, hey. Now I know. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they did. Dan called and he's coming to the public meeting and wants to speak and then you called me And I missed you the first after. time and you called me back. Look, I'm not here to stop you from doing anything. I, it's not my right to do that. I am, I'm one of you guys. I want more people to understand why you're doing what you're doing. And you're one of the good ones. Because I have seen other videos. I have oh, watched they where, where they harass. Person, person. Yeah. Um, Is there anything you need to ask me? No. There's really nothing. I think that's it. I appreciate you oh, no. uh, yeah. inviting me down here. I yeah. think it says a lot for you. I think it says no, a lot I, for what you want for the that. city. But I'm just and doing what I would think like anybody I said, would else do. There's literally a handful. Maybe I can count them on one hand. Maybe even less than five supervisors, mayors, or chief of police is whoever invited me down to say hello. or oh, I'm sorry. To say hello or, or just, you know, use the platform. I think you can do great for this city. Thank you. I really I appreciate do, it. and I appreciate you calling down here and bringing yeah. me in here because, like I said, it doesn't happen that it's often. A, it's a learning experience a for me, too. This is a win, too. Right? Awesome. And coming down here to talk to you is yeah. definitely yeah. a win because, at the end of the day, I'm not here to make anybody's day rough. I'm not here to make anybody look a fool. <laughs> what I want is I want facts for my country. Cause the, the fact you know, one of the last things I want you to understand is I, they're all great people over here. They are. They just didn't handle it right. Even the chief of police is a good man. He's working with me, he's helping me, and he's directing me. Everybody has their moment, you know, and I apologize for that. I do. It's it's really all do. Come, like I said, all, all that to me comes down to when me walking in a public building with that reaction, it all comes down to ego. Because at the end of the day, like, you walk in this building, who owns the building? The people. People do. Every day is a new experience. New glass down here, huh? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just like one more thing that's like. Seriously, wow, seriously. why was that needed? Okay. You know, like, oh, I, did anybody ever jump the counter? It's you. it's you. I know that's me. It's, it's like, about it's, it's like this court system over here. That, that's you too. That used to be sitting over that's there. You. They brought it up here to that's take you. the fight to you know. You can't. Yeah, every time you come in here, it's like, oh, you can't video record me. You can't. And it's like, I'm not here for the courts. I'm here for the city hall. You know what I mean? Like, this well, this, this thing should out. be around the corner. You know, in my well, opinion, thanks, in, in the way that they. Thanks a lot. <laughs> But hey, they lock the buildings down. I like, would never do that. And it's like people are like, "Oh, thanks, Dan, you did that." It's like, did I? <laughs> or was it the ego? Was it the ego thing? You know what I mean? A little of both. Oh, that's what it comes down to. But like, is the glass necessary? No, but thanks, Dan. I mean, thanks a lot. It's the world we live in, I guess. The way they, they walk like around it. the building, it's all every every department now. Uh, everyone has a glass uh -huh. on it. Yeah, thanks. Nice. What, what do they think? To what do they come to accomplish by doing? That I understand. You know what? I can understand it in some departments, but others, I mean, if you go up to the assessors, the counter is like that deep. With the glass there, all you got is a little spot to slide things under. I have to now go up and I have to fix yeah, some can't of that. Yeah, you paperwork on that. Can't do anything. Oh, well, there's a little, little ledge. Lunch. Yeah, thanks, Dan. And it's like, and, and let's just be straight and honest, like, that glass doesn't affect me doing what I was doing before. It ain't gonna right. stop me from anything more well, than I was doing. Well, they doing. had plastic up before when you were there. Well, yeah, it was for it wasn't for stuff like that. But I'm saying, like, the glass doesn't stop me from doing exactly what I was doing before. Right. I mean, my camera's gonna see through it. Yeah. I can still stand in the same place. But you see, they I just feel, right on the counter. They feel protected. They feel protected. Like, do I ever put anybody in danger? I've Heck spent, no. I've spent probably an hour or so just talking to them, and they understand. I said, "What? Well, no, all right, you and I." You go up there, you're six foot something, you got a long beard. What if a little old lady walked in with a camera and a body cam? They'd walk up and go there, oh, can I help you, t can I help you, dear? You know, it's, that's how it is. 
perception and the situation the way it is. Yeah, I mean, but what I if somebody the First Amendment on it so that yeah. to the point where it comes normal. If it, if someone at the clerk's office video recording a transaction, I want it to be so normal that they don't flank an eye. I don't want to put glass walls up. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dan. Hey, I'll I'll see you later. Call me whenever right. you want. Have a good day. Yeah. Drive safe. So that's our interview down there with the new mayor of the city of Lockport. You guys let me know what you think. Um, definitely got some new glass up there in the clerk's office and all the windows have new glass to protect them from a, a cameraman with a beard. Um, <laughs> you heard it first. It's because of me. The mayor said it himself. But um, I think it's a little bit ridiculous. Um, Hopefully in the future we can make a First Amendment audit and government transparency uh, a good thing because at the end of the day these people who think it's a bad thing do have children to raise and children to grow up and uh, they're eventually going to have to not be in the position. They have children that are going to want to have these rights. They're not always going to be, you know, government officials and, and allowed to have all those perks. So, you know, transparency in government is a good thing. So you guys let me know what you think of that in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, Erie County fam, that was part one. Part two will come out shortly. Stay tuned, hit that bells, hit the notifications, hit that thumbs up. In part two, we're going to go over this here directive to all departments put out by John Lombardi, the mayor that you just met. The letter had reads, absolutely no one working for City Hall is to talk to the media in any form, newspaper, television, or radio. From this point moving forward, all questions pertaining to the media must be directed to his office. Therefore, he is eliminating the First Amendment right of all the employees of City Hall. And we're going to not only have an, another interview with him to discuss this and get his opinion of why he thinks this is correct. So make sure you pay attention because the next one we're going to find out what he really thinks about all this. We live in a society now where people want to recall how they discipline their child. People that might get mad with this video is the people that probably already embarrassed their child. You can't you can discipline your child in their room. Take something away from them. If they act up, well, I'm like, son, you can't play the game. That was before I came here. I govern differently. I give everybody an opportunity. And what I've told all my department heads since I got here, I am your boss, but I do not want to be your boss unless you don't do your job and now I have to. Dude, you pull the Constitution out of your pockets out here. Like that was supposed to prove something. First Amendment, freedom of the press. We have every right to vote out here and there. Your name is not Dan Erie County. Um, this isn't Erie County. Yeah. Sure it is. I'm here is Dan Erie County. Legitimate? Maybe. Official? No.